seen what has happened to those two daughter cells in prophase 2. So, we will continue with meiosis 2 and now those two daughter cells are in metaphase 2. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes, they align on the equatorial plane. So, let us draw these two daughter cells. And in metaphase, the chromosomes would align on the equatorial plane. We made the centrioles here as we said that the axis is going to be at right angles to, do, to what happened in the first case. That is in prophase 1, metaphase 1. So here it is at right angles. These are the aster rays. The spindle fibers. The spindle fibers are again going to be continuous and discontinuous. Chromosomes have aligned on the equatorial plane. So if these are the poles, this vertical line becomes the equatorial plane. So let us make this chromosome. This chromosome has condensed and we are seeing these two arms very distinctly. The two arms and the other chromosome was here and its two arms and these chromosomes had the exchanged genetic material. So this was the solid one which we made and one was hollow. So in these two chromosomes we are showing the exchange genetic material. Same is going to happen here. The fibers which are attached to this chromosome these are the discontinuous of the chromosomal fiber and this one which is going from one pole to the other is continuous. Now, let me make this chromosome separately here. What we have made is the chromosome with its two arms or chromatids. Same on this side. And we have shown the spindle fibers attached to the kinetochore. Now, this is the same centromere and the kinetochore. So, kinetochore is one. So, spindle fibers of two sides are attached to the same kinetochore of one chromosome. That means, when these spindle fibers, they contract, the centromere is going to split. So, here, same thing is going to happen in the other cell also. So, chromosomes are, have arranged on the equatorial plane. Chromosomes on equatorial plane then spindle fibers spindle fibers attached to same kinetto core so both the spindle fibers from both the poles are attached to the same kinetto core this is what has happened in metaphase 2 now these two cells get into the next stage and the next stage is anaphase 2. Let us draw these two cells here. Both the cells going into anaphase 2 simultaneously. The centriole here and at the other pole with their Aster rays. And now these chromosomal spindle fibers have contracted. So this is one spindle fiber chromosomal. This is the other one. And the continuous fibers are as it is. These two chromosomes are going to split now by splitting off the same centromere. These two arms or the chromatids are attached to the same centromere. So when these fibers contract, the centromere is going to split. And when this centromere splits, what we are going to see here is, I'm drawing this chromosome. So this arm is here. Oh, let me draw it. This was the solid one which we were drawing on this side. That means it has this exchange genetic material. And here also, so these two parts have separated and on this side, let us show this one. It had this exchange material 
and here this exchange metal. And as they have separated by splitting of centromere, we would see a fiber appear in between these the split, uh, centromere which have undergone splitting. We will call this fiber as interzonal fiber. So interzonal fiber appears only when the centromere splits. The same thing is going to happen in the other cell also. We may not draw it. So what are the changes in this case? Centromere splits. And because of the splitting, the two chromatids, the ones which had the original DNA and the copy DNA, they have separated. When centromere splits, interzonal fiber, fiber appears. So interzonal fiber is there. Again, in early anaphase, the chromosomes are here. By the late anaphase, they would reach up to the ports or closer to the ports. By the end of anaphase itself or by the beginning of telophase 2, cytokinesis would also start. But we would show that in telophase 2. Both these cells enter telophase 2. So now the stage is telophase what has happened in telophase 2? These are the two cells. And the changes which take place in telophase are reverse of what happens in prophase. In prophase 1 or prophase 2, nuclear membrane dissociates, disappears, spindle fibers reappear here. Everything reverse. So centrioles are here at the poles. Asterase spindle fibers have disappeared. So what happens in telophase? Nuclear membrane reappears. Spindle fibers, asterase, they disappear. And the chromosomes, they decondense to become chromatin. Chromosomes change to chromatin, that is the thin fibers. Let us show this here. These two chromosomes, they have become thinner. The two chromosomes are on this side and the nuclear membrane has reappeared around it. So nuclear membrane has reappeared. We start seeing the nucleus. Karyokinesis is, has taken place. I'm going to draw the change in this cell also. So that we see all the daughter cells. Nuclear membrane would reappear here also. And each side would receive two chromatin fibers. And as we said... By the end of anaphase 2 or telophase, one, uh, two, telophase 2, cytokinesis has already begun. That means we need to show the cytoplasmic constriction. And this constriction is happening at a plane which is at right angles to the first one. So these were the poles and this was the equatorial plane. Same constriction is going to appear here. And on this side. When this constriction gets deeper, this will become one cell, this will become another and this. So there would be four daughter cells formed after cytokinesis 2. So if we have to just add the same changes here, what is happening in telophase 2 and if I show cytokinesis also in the same thing, then this is going to get deeper or let me show telophase 2 in 1 and cytokinesis only in this cell. So this constriction is going to get deeper and the two cells would we get separated. Same thing would happen here. So at the end of cytokinesis 2, we would get four daughter 
cells and all four daughter cells have only two chromatin fibers or chromosomes. That means we started with a parent cell having four number of chromosomes. Now here we have four daughter cells having two number of chromosomes. So they are haploid. So what has happened is we started with four chromosomes in the parent cell. After meiosis one, we got two daughter cells having N and N. That was reduction of division. And now after meiosis two, we are again getting four daughter cells having haploid number of chromosomes. So meiosis one is reductional division because chromosome number from four has been reduced to two. Here also let us write two as we have started with four. So from four it has been reduced to half. So meiosis one is reductional division. And from two, again we are getting two daughter cells having two number of chromosomes. So meiosis two is equational division. And that is why we many a times say that meiosis two is same as mitosis. It is not exactly same as mitosis because before mitosis interphase takes place. But before meiosis two, there is no interphase. There is only interkinesis. So we have seen all the stages of meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 and meiosis 1 reductional division where exchange of genetic material takes place and meiosis 2 is equational division because it also results in formation of the cells with the same number of chromosomes as it has received from meiosis 1. So this is the parent cell having half the number of chromosomes after meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 starts, sorry, meiosis 2 starts here and the cells which we obtain are having the same number of chromosomes as this cell and that is why it is called equational division. So meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 complete the reductional division as a whole. We are separating it as part 1 and part 2 and we are saying part 1 is reductional and part 2 is equational. But when we talk of the whole process, we consider meiosis as a reductional division. It helps in formation of haploid cells, which are normally gametes in case of higher organisms. In the next segment, we'll talk about the significance of meiosis.